Good afternoon and welcome to Cab Writer Comprehensive. Cab Writer Comprehensive is an in-depth video series that will teach you to use Cab Writer for personal or commercial cabinet design. In this first segment, I will introduce you to Cab Writer and explain its use, features, and capabilities. You will be given a quick tour of its commands and toolbar. Finally, I will show you how to install Cab Writer. Throughout this video series, we will model the kitchen shown before you. We will produce shop drawings and export all design files necessary to build the cabinets. I will show you two paths for sheet goods cutting. A path for the hobbyist who is building his or her own cabinets and will be cutting sheet goods on a table saw. And a path for the professional cabinet maker who will use a CNC machine for sheet goods cutting and drilling. To save video length, I will skip the actual dimensioning of the shop drawings, except to quickly demonstrate a few dimensions. This video series assumes the viewer is a knowledgeable SketchUp user. Let's begin by providing some answers to a very simple question. What is CabWriter? CabWriter is the SketchUp extension. Actually, it is two SketchUp extensions because it comes with another extension called Cutlass Bridge. Each play an important role, as we will see shortly. The primary role of CabWriter is to automate the design of custom cabinets. But it does a number of other things. For example, it provides a 3D prototype. Prototyping is an important part of any woodworking project. By prototyping a design, you can eliminate design errors and the resulting wasted cuttings of expensive materials such as sheet goods. CabWriter also produces detailed shop drawings that aid in the cutting and assembly of custom cabinets. CabWriter comes with another extension called Cutlist Bridge. Cutlist Bridge permits exporting of Cutlist to Microsoft Excel, OpenOffice, and a sheet goods optimization package such as the very popular Cutlass Plus FX. In this series, we will use Cutlass Plus FX almost exclusively because of its powerful capabilities and its optimization capability in particular. Lastly, Cutlass Bridge also exports DXF files for sheet good optimization in layout on tools such as Vetrix Cut 2D Pro. This permits CNC machine cutting of sheet goods. Now that we've answered what is CabWriter, and indeed what is Cutlass Bridge, which is included in CabWriter, it's time to get on with learning to use CabWriter. We will start with a tour of its tools and proceed to installing CabWriter. You will note that I'm using SketchUp Pro 2016. CabWriter works on SketchUp 2014 Make and Pro, SketchUp 2015 Make and Pro, and SketchUp 2016 Make and Pro. I will use none of the Pro capabilities, even though I'm running on SketchUp Pro. So, if you have SketchUp Make 2014 through 2016, CabWriter will work just fine on your machine. All right, now let's install CabWriter. Installation is a two-step process and fairly simple. You will have to download an installation file through some method and store it on, a, in a, on your machine in some folder that you remember. Once you've done that, you can go to Window, Preferences, Extensions, Install Extension. Here's where I've installed my installation file. So I'll just select it, and say Open, and I'll get a couple of messages. I'll just say Yes. Now notice that what was installed was a CabWriter installer. And it's selected. So if I say OK, 
What I now have to do is close SketchUp and reopen it. So I suggest that you do this with a blank or new SketchUp file. So I just close it and I'll reopen it. And now let's look at preferences, extensions, and you'll see Cab Writer Factory Settings checked. Down here you have Cab Writer unchecked. You need to check it. Come down again and check Cutlass Bridge and say OK. Lastly, we have to bring up the toolbar. So we'll go to View, Toolbars, bring up Cab Writer, and close. This is the Cab Writer toolbar. Before I get to that, I want to show you where the Cab Writer menus are, including Cutlass Bridge. If you go to the File menu, you'll see Cab Writer has a list of file operations. Create Project, that allows you to create a Cab Writer project. Edit Project allows you to edit that Cab Writer project. When you've drawn a bunch of cabinets and changed them and modified them and what have you, you may want to renumber them for sequential numbering. This command will allow you to do that. At the moment, in the Alpha version, we don't have a user interface for changing default settings. Instead, you have to do that at the moment in a text editor. And when you've done that and saved the new file, you'll have to reload factory settings using this command. CapWriter allows you to assign hatches to section cuts. This is the command that will allow you to assign hatches to particular types of sections. Sometimes you need to redraw all the cabinets. A good example is perhaps you've changed a factory setting that applies to all cabinets. If you've done that, you don't want to go back and redraw one cabinet at a time. You want to draw the entire model of cabinets all at once. This command will allow you to do that. Cutlass Bridge has three commands. One is export to Cutlass plus FX. That is the way we're going to cut uh, export cut lists in um, this series. We'll do that exclusively because of the very powerful capabilities of Cutlass plus FX. But you can also export cut lists to Microsoft Excel or Open Office. And lastly, you can export to a DXF folder all the DXF files that you will need if you want to cut your sheet goods on a CNC machine. Let's go to Edit. And down here you will notice there's an Edit Cabinets command, which will allow you to select a cabinet and then edit it, change any feature of the cabinet, and save it. In the draw command, there are three tools for drawing. Construct walls. I'll show you a very quick use of that in a moment. Create story stick is the primary tool for drawing cabinets. That's the one you will use an awful lot. And I'll give you a very simple demonstration of that. Create sections from a section plane. This allows you to create your shop drawings. You can create you can create sections for plan views or elevation views. I'll demonstrate that in this introductory video. Under window, you will see it a cutlass bridge command called extended entity info. And as its name implies, it extends the Entity Info dialog box with a new box where you can assign all kinds of attributes to a component. 
I'll show you a little of that also. There are also some context menu commands, which I will show you in a moment. But I want to go now to the toolbar. The toolbar has a few tools. CabWriter project is one that allows you to create a project. Now before you can create a project, you have to save a project. In other words, you have to save your file for the first time. So I'm going to save this file as my desktop introductory SketchUp. Oh, uh, I'll say introductory cab writer. So now I've saved that to my desktop. Now I can create a cab writer project. This is the first thing I have to do when doing a cab writer project. This dialog box comes up filled in with my information, but you can change this to anything you want. You can put your uh, your own project name in here, your customer's name, the customer's company, if they have a company, street address, state, country, phone number, cell phone, email address, and any description you want to place down here about the project. Having done that, you can close this box, and now you have a cab writer project. If you want to edit that project, you can use this command and you can make any edits or changes you would like. Now, I'm not going to draw cabinets in this introductory segment, but I, I will just very quickly demonstrate some of these tools to you. This is a tool called Construct Walls and it helps you draw walls on which you will draw your cabinets. There are two types of walls, an inside wall and an outside wall, and the thickness of those walls have defaults. I believe the defaults at the moment are four and a half inches for an inside wall and six and a half inches for an outside wall. But to draw walls, you simply click on this. Notice that the icon is a pencil with a red bar red standing for warm or hot. That's an inside wall. If I hit Alt, it'll change to a blue bar. Blue meaning cold or outside wall. And it alternates between those two as I hit Alt. So to draw an inside wall, I simply click somewhere, in this case on the origin, drag it out, I can hit control and to change whether this wall falls on one side of a line or the other. I have to move the icon to see the result, but you can see what happens. All right, so now I can just type into the VCB the dimension of the wall. Let's say in this case I want it to be 8 feet. I'll say 8 apostrophe, enter, and I now have an 8-foot wall. The default height, I believe, is 8 feet or 96 inches. I'll check that out. Ninety-six inches. Then I can continue to create other walls. I can start here. Notice it's drawing it on the ground even though I started here at this point. It's drawing it on the ground along the green axis. I can type uh, 12 feet and that's my wall that's adjoining this one. And I can continue to do this until I've actually formed the walls of my kitchen. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a simple cabinet. 
so I'll rotate around here. What I like to do is my cabinets, my default cabinet depth is 13 inches base cabinets. I'm sorry, 24 inches base cabinets. And so what I'll do is I'll create a guideline 24 inches on the out along the red axis on the floor and do the same here and now I'm going to create a cabinet creating cabinets is done with the story stick this guy right here so I'll select the story stick and I'll start right here at this intersection I'll come along on this line and click again doesn't matter where I click and it'll want to know what type of style. Well, I'm going to use a left end um, I'll use a left end blind inside. And you'll see what that is in a moment. Now notice these little triangles got closer together and the reason is is because that's the dimensions of the particular style I chose. Now what I'm going to do with the control key is click it a few times until I get to a D called dimension and I can determine the width of this cabinet. I'm gonna say it's 30 inches. So I'll just simply type 30 enter and notice it moved the point to here. And I'm going to come over and click again this way. It'll ask for what kind of style, and I'm going to say a right end panel. All right. Now I'm ready to draw my cabinet. I simply say end, meaning I've laid out all of my styles. And the first thing that comes up is a base cabinet attributes box and it has a bunch of defaults. I'm going to leave the defaults alone, but I could change them. For instance, the depth of cabinet I could change to something besides 24 inches. The thickness of the countertop is default is one and a quarter, and the height of the countertop default is 36 inches. Face frame material is rough lumber, maple. Door and draw panels are sheet goods maple and panels are sheet goods maple plywood and back panels are sheet goods maple plywood I'm going to accept that as is I could change it to almost anything I want but I'm going to accept that as is these drop downs for instance will allow you to choose the type of material and the species and I'm again going to choose maple. So I'll say OK. Now it wants to know, notice these red triangles turned to blue because that's the cabinet I'm working on at the moment. It's a one box cabinet. It wants to know the type of box. I'm going to say standard base with one door. And I'm going to, again, uh, use the default materials and I'll say okay and there we go I've got my cabinet a couple of things that don't look so good about this cabinet is that door looks a little wide I may want to change it so I'll select the cabinet right click and on the context menu I have a, a number of things I can do one is edit the cabinet, select the entire cabinet, select the face frames of the cabinet, select end panels, or the box, or the doors, or draws, or toe kick. I'm going to edit the cabinet, and I'm going to leave the type of styles that I've chosen alone. I'm going to go to this box and leave this alone. And lastly, I'm going to change this to two doors. And 
I'm going to change this to a standard base withdraw. Uh, so I'm going to make it two doors. And two draws. Hit OK. And now my cabinet's been changed. Notice that that edit command I used is the same command as this one right here, edit cabinet. Notice also that the base of the cabinet has a toe kick that's been integrated. Now, I used a blind cabinet here. Well, actually, let me change this. Let me edit this one more time. I'm going to change it to a blind corner base. And again, I'm going to use two doors and two draws. And I'll hit OK. Notice what happened here. I have two draws and two doors, and the area here is extended in toward the wall a ways so that I don't, I don't waste all of this space in here. If I come over here to the layers and I take off the uh, doors, base doors, remove those, you can see I've got, I can get in here and put stuff in the cabinet over here in this wasted area or what would otherwise be wasted area. Also notice all of the drill the drilled holes for the shelves, the drawers right here. And support holes, uh, which I can't see real well here unless I take the walls down. Notice the construction holes here and here. So Cabrider supplies all of this information. So Cabrider actually draws the cabinet as you're going to construct it. If I had a number of cabinets here and I'd been editing them and and as you edit you change you use the next cabinet number so you end up with cabinets that aren't numbered sequentially. It's a simple matter of using the renumbering cabinets tool to, to put them back in sequence. If I change a default, let's say a you know a default like the height of the toe kick, I might want to refresh or reload my factory settings and then having done that I may want to redraw all the cabinets and I do that by going to the edit command cab writer I'm sorry edit or file command cab writer redraw all cabinets let me do a section cut here. So I'll use the section plane tool here. Set it on the floor. Choose it. And move it up. Until I get the view, I want a section. And then I can use Cab Writer to create a section plane. And I can call this thing any, anything I want. I might call it uh, Plan View A.
And notice it gave me a scene, plan view A, with a cross section. Now I can assign materials to each of these cross section uh, types. For instance, this wall, I could assign, assign a material to the wall. I could assign a material to um, three quarter inch finished plywood or hardwood or what have you. And it would give me a view um, with hatched material. With this view, I can then go to layout and label it and dimension it. I'm going to go back to the cabinet against the wall just to show you a few other commands. If I write, if I choose any part of this cabinet, any part, doesn't matter which part, I'll choose one of these draw fronts and right click. Cabwriter has a bunch of commands that I can use. One is select the entire cabinet. Notice the cabinet is locked and that's to try to keep you from doing things you shouldn't do. For example, if I were to choose that part, if I attempted to change this name, it wouldn't let me. And there's a good reason for that. If you change the name of a component that Cabwriter creates, Cabwriter places in that component definition a number of attributes. If you change the name of that component, those attributes are lost. In my mind, in my view, that's a fault of SketchUp. Um, that there, that there isn't a way to change the name of component without losing its attributes. So they're locked and in order to make any changes to them you have to intentionally unlock them. Let's um, look at Cutlass Bridge. Cutlass Bridge has an extended entity info. If I select any one of these components, you'll notice that CabWriter assigned a bunch of attributes to that component. One is the subassembly it belongs to. This says it belongs to cabinet 3, which is a lower cabinet end panel. It's rough lumber, maple, and I'm going to resize it. In other words, from its drawn dimension, I'm going to add on its thickness 1 32nd of an inch. And on its width, I'm going to add 1 16th of an inch. So that when I cut this material, the cut list will call out for oversizing of 1 32nd of an inch on thickness and 1 16th of an inch on width. And this is all dependent on your um, your manufacturing process. In this case, this particular manufacturing process likes to build the end panel and then use a drum sander to sand it down such that all the joints are exactly on the same plane. And that's the purpose of this 1 32nd of an inch. But the point here is that there is this extended entity info and each of these parts have something different about them. And those are stored with the component. And so if we change the name of the component, we're going to lose these attributes. So we don't want to do that. We want to use the tools called renumbering or edit cabinet. We don't want to change component names uh, with the normal name changing capability that uh, SketchUp gives us. Let me uh, now we'll create a cut list. Let me get rid of the wall here so that we only have the cabinet. We'll select all and we'll say cut list bridge and we'll ask it to export to Cutlass Plus FX. And it says the Cutlass file has been written to my desktop 
And the reason it's the desktop is that's the same folder that my model is in. And it'll, it'll write a file with the same name as my model, but with an extension of CWX, which stands for Cab Writer Extension. I'll say OK. Now I can go to my desktop and double click on that file. And having done that, it opened up Cutlass Plus FX, and here are all the parts for that cabinet. I'm not going to go into the details of this right now. You'll see this later, and I'll explain it in, in, in its entirety. And I just wanted to expose it to you right now. While I've got this selected, I can also go to Cutlass Bridge, File, Cutlass Bridge, and say Export DXF. Once the colors have been changed, the export file has been created on my desktop. So what I need to do now is open Aspire. It's one of the applications that will optimize and um, sheet goods and produce the G code I need. I'll open that up. And I'll create a new file. Import some vectors. I'll have to go to my desktop. And look for the introductory cab writer. And I'm going to show you the three quarter of an inch maple plywood pre-finished layouts first. You, for each of these materials, the half inch maple plywood pre-finished material, the quarter inch maple plywood, and the 70 um, three quarters of an inch shop plywood. For each of those material types, you have a different file. The one I'm going to show you right now is the three quarter inch maple plywood pre-finished. Notice when I open that, I got a bunch of parts laid out here in a line, quite a few parts. I want to actually optimize those and put them on my plywood uh, sheets and see how they lay out. So I'll do that next. There you go. Now this was one cabinet, so it only took two sheets of plywood. This is the layout for the first sheet. And then the remainder are on this sheet. In our continuing series in this, or continuing segments in this series, you'll see more complex and more uh, and larger designs. But I just wanted to introduce you to that at the moment. So I'll close that. So that's pretty much it. That's an introduction to Cab Writer. I think you've seen enough now that uh, we can proceed in this with the next segment where we'll actually begin to draw walls and cabinets. So until then, have a good day.